Good afternoon, and I'm very pleased to present this historical overview of presidents of the club, starting in the inception in 1962, and which we have titled Remembering Our Presidents. Um, this has a twofold purpose. One is to record the past presidents and their professions, and secondly, to present a lighthearted way to give you a feel of how the club felt at varying periods uh, in our existence. So you will note that I may give some side details at certain junctures. I was originally asked by director Jeff to do a history of the club, but that would be impossible in half an hour. So I decided that I would do a series that covers different aspects of the club's journey and start today with the presidents. Before I actually start on the presidents themselves, I prepared a few snippets for the record that I think may interest members and uh, at least give, the, give them an insight of, of, of some of the things that happen in the club. The, the rich history, um, has many members who had family members in the club, either at the same time or, or subsequent. I speak of members like George Hatchety and his son Paul, his daughter Seymour, by the way, is now a member of Rory South, Harold Cole and Brian, who is still a member, Leo Leacock and his son Algie, who is still a member, Sir Stanley Blanchard and his son Richard, still a member, now living in Toronto, Patrick Hines and his daughter Fiona, now our president, and still a member, of course, um, Horace King and his daughter Donna, still a member, and Brenda Pope and Anton, her son Anton, both current members. We even had some grandchildren as Waldo Clark, is the grandson of St. Clair, Clary Clark, the ex chief fire officer, and a long standing member of our club in his day. We've also had four presidents who were subsequently knighted, namely Sir Taylor Branker, Sir Stanley Blanchett. Sir Trevor Carmichael and Sir Frank Ramsey. None were actual knights when they served, but were subsequently um, knighted. Also, not presidents, but other knights were um, Sir Albert Graham, better known to us as Bertie, Sir Winston Scott, who was better known to us as Hardy, um, before assuming the role of Governor General, and Sir Harcourt Lewis. We've had at least 10 senators, and not in any particular order, Sir Harcourt Lewis, Lindsay Bolden, Sir Stanley Blanchett, Sir Trevor Carmichael, Anthony Rees, Andrew Bino, Lisa Cummings, Lester Whitehead, Sir Theodore Branker, who became the president of the Senate, and Sam Ashby. We've had three commissions of police. Two, Gerwood Springer and Harville Durant served as presidents, and Grantley Watson was also a member but resigned soon after joining. We've had three district governors, Sir Stanley Blanchett, David Edwards and Tony Watkins. So Stanley was in 1986. David was 2004 and Tony in 2010. Miles Rothwell was also a governor, but had already left the club to join Rotary West at, at the time of becoming governor. We were fortunate to have three chief fire officers. None became president, but all gave outstanding service. St. Clair Clark, also the first Barbadian to be fire chief. Carol Christie and Clifford Clark, who only passed away recently. Other snippets of interest on the lighter side is that there were three brothers-in-law as presidents, Pat Topping, Harry Trahane, and Ron Davis. Sean Franklin is the son-in-law of John Cabral. Richard Blanchett and Peter Williams are cousins. Uh, Sir Winston Scott was appointed governor general before he could take up the post of president. Sir Harcourt Lewis, Lindsay Bolden and Lisa Cummins were all government ministers. And Lloyd Boychild Smith and Lindsay Bolden were elected members of parliament. So those are just a few snippets I, I wanted to start with, things that some of the newer members may not know. So on to the presidents. Our charter president was Theodore Branker, later Sir Theodore, and he was an attor attorney at law or barrister at law as was known then. He was known, especially in later times, to be one of our most jovial members at meetings. His eyesight had failed him, but he always came early. He knew the number of steps from where he was dropped off by the chauffeur to walk past the front desk at the Hilton, and then a number of steps to the right to the elevator. A member of staff or one of us Rotarians would press the elevator for him, and he would exit on the second floor and know how many steps to the left until he reached the door of the Rotary Room. Then, along with Gordon Parkinson, 
the two of them would have Heineken beers while waiting for the meeting to start, served by Mr. Davies, the then long-standing maitre d' at the Hilton. This was a weekly affair, which I joined them many Thursdays, but never partook of the Heineken's. Following the theater was Stanley Chapman, who became the head of Barbados Shipping and Trading and remained as chairman of the Association for the Mentally Retarded, it was then called, which administered the Child at Home. Horace King and myself had the pleasure of serving on that board for many, many years with him. Next was Sam Ashby, a businessman with many interests, mostly insurance, and he too became a senator. In 1965, John Jack Nelson, named Jack because he headed Pan American Airlines, uh, Ermin uh, Wandel. Um, John Jack, no, right, okay. Uh, he headed Pan American Airlines and therefore was nicknamed Jack because there were two John Nelsons in the club at the time. He was followed in 1966 by Stanley Blanchett, later Sir Stanley, previously mentioned, who went on to become district governor and father of Richard. Stanley was the owner of a major hardware business. 1967 saw Dennis Bell, the only president that I do not know personally and for whom there is little record of his business activity. We've tried but could never find any information on Dennis. He was followed in 1968 by Neville Grosvenor, then the publisher of the Barbados Advocate. For anyone who wants to know about Rotary Service and Fellowship, Neville Grosvenor epitomized both. We proposed him as a district governor in 1991, but unfortunately his bid failed. He was followed by the second John, J John Nelson, this time John Electric Nelson, because he was the head of the Barbados Light and Power. Hence the nickname Electric. He was followed by Doug Carter, a family physician. I think we, we, we jump one too quickly, um, right. Or we maybe have missed Doug there. Who, um, but Doug Carter was a family physician um, who only passed away about three years ago. He was followed in 1971 by the then commissioner, Gerwood Springer, um, the first commissioner of police to be the president. Gerwood was followed by Pat Castani, an advertising executive, in 1972, and Pat went on to pen the words of the song Let's Join Hands for the 19 chaining, 1979 Cheney project. Only last week I found a copy of the original score of that song, which I had as a member of the committee. He was followed in 1973 by Lester Whitehead, an attorney at law, and he was followed in 1974 by Miles Rothwell, an engineer. There are many stories I could talk about with Miles, but today is not the time for that. He was an excellent engineer. Miles was followed by David Harvey Reed, better known as Mosey, a real estate broker. Mosey actually introduced me into the club when I was transferred back from Grenada in 1979, as his father and mine had gone to school together. Mosey followed, was followed by Pat Topping, better known as Top Care. You may know that many of the presidents had a nickname. Pat was a businessman and auctioneer. He was also an avid radio amateur. Pat was followed by Harold Cole, father of our current member, Brian. Harold was the head of SO in Barbados and the region, and he did a lot of traveling. He was a secretary to, of this club, and he was also a district secretary. I was destined to be a governor of the district as we constantly tried to nominate him. But that was not to be as home rule came first. And after having traveled so much for SO, traveling for Rotary was just not on the cards. He was followed by Colin Jones, who was the forerunner, or should I say the catalyst for what is now Winston Warren's profession, as he started a major cleaning company, Colton Enterprises. Colin was dressed only in short pants and long socks. He was followed in 1979 by Peter Innes, who had the honor to be the president and the chair for the Chain Inc. project 
by far our largest ever project in this club and the Caribbean and probably around the world. Peter was one of the calmest persons you could ever meet. He was an insurance executive. I will digress here to say how sad it is for me as a member of that committee to have lost Morris Foster recently, the chair, um, only just two months ago or so, only this week, Richard Goddard. Um, while not a Rotarian, Richard, let us use the office at Kensington House, Bonkabell as our headquarters for meetings, and helped us with the vast logistics knowledge as a member of the R as a previous member of the RCMP in Canada. It would appear now that I'm the only member with Paul Hatchetty left of that committee. Peter was followed in 1980 by Bill Houghton, another insurance executive who was very involved in fundraising in the club. He was very interested in Rotary International and Rotary Foundation and left a donation to the foundation as well, which was gratefully received by this club about two years ago from his daughter, Joanne Spencer. Bill was followed by Richard Blanchard, company director in the family hardware business and still a member of the club now living in Toronto. Richard was followed by Trevor Carmichael, now Sir Trevor, an attorney at law. Trevor's year was had a very um, unique challenge in that the district at the time, number district four or five, held a, uh, its annual conference at the Dover Convention Center on behalf of the then governor, George Louis Clement from Martinique. George Louis' conference was scheduled for district for, for June 1983 in Suriname, but civil unrest there in the months leading up to the conference caused him to visit us and at short notice requested us to hold a conference for him. Everything for that conference was organized in an eight week period along with Rotary West. We moved on from that era to the year of Harry Trahane. Harry, an accountant by profession, was also treasurer of the club for a long, long time. He was a partner of Coopers and Lyran, along with another past president, Grenville. Harry was followed by George Hatchetty, a businessman and property developer. It take a day to give you all the internal jokes that can be said about him. George was one of the big ticket sellers for Beijing Night or major project. And a group of us had a cricket inspired rivalry going on as to who could sell the most tickets, but certainly scoring centuries as we all sold over a hundred tickets each. That group, George Leo, we got all the joint, Trevor Carmichael and myself, um, had this rivalry and treasurer Lionel Moore one year received more money than tickets he'd given out to George and promptly announced that that was Lebanese accounting. George was so amused that he talked about that for years that he was able to teach Lionel about accounts. He was followed by Bob Morris in 1985. Um, Bob and I have a, quite a bit of nexus in that um, we both work for the same Royal Bank of Canada, opened a branch in 1970 together. He was my boss. Uh, when he left Barbados to go to Grenada, I took over for him at that branch. And when he left Grenada, I was transferred to Grenada to take over for him. So, and, um, and we were both presidents of the club. So quite, quite a bit between Bob and myself um, as we were And we both joined Rotary at the new Rotary Club of Grenada East uh, back in 1978. After Bob, we went on to Granville Phillips, now Dr. Granville, a corporate secretary and receiver, uh, and better known as Milad, given that name because of his, his um, constant reference in court when he was uh, playing for receiverships. Grenville was followed in 1987 by Rex Vesa. I have to digress a bit on Rex, um, what I would call an eccentric monarchist. And if he were here, I'm sure he would be happy to hear me say that. He loved all the British pomp and ceremony. I was particular to have guest speakers um, that reflected that. Uh, um, it would be normal to have the likes of the Lord Mayor of London uh, address the club. You always address the club, Mr. President, fellow Rotarians and guests, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you. And this, I think this was copied by many for many years. Um, Rex was a retired supervisor 
at the Tate and Lyle International Company and had a great knowledge of the world sugar market. Rex and his friend J.W. Williams, also a member of the club but not a president, spent the entire week arranging to get guests to come to the club. Rex was followed by Leo Leacock, father of algae. Leo, owner of a major import company, was a good friend to many of us still in the club. We had great exchanges. When algae was proposed to the club, we asked them, you know, you'll just say, so Leo, you have your son algae coming into the club. You have to be careful what you say. Not mention a beat, he said, yes, yes. And they brought him in. I need somebody to pay my fines. Leo was followed by Frank Ramsey, later Sir Frank, who was a pediatrician. Frank was followed by our then commissioner of police, Oliver Jurek, in 1990. In 1991, Orville was followed by David Edwards, that's me, right? For, um, Garantel operator and real estate broker and went on to become a district governor. Following me was John Cabral, at the time a company director and wholesaler of hardware products. We had to do some coercion to get John to come forward because of his love <coughs> of, for public speaking. John was followed by John Grace, who at the time headed a manufacturing company which manufactured sausage, etc. and was president of the Manufacturers Association. Ironically, he was followed by another pork enthusiast, Andrew Bynum, who we all know for his proper pork. Andrew was and is still a supermarket owner. Andrew was followed by Stanley McDonald in 1995. Stanley operated a wholesale company and laundry. He was followed in 1996 by Tony Watkins, who went on to become a district governor as well. Um, um, Tony was the manager at Barbados Light and Power Company. He was also district secretary. He was followed by Norman Barrow, who still runs his music supply store. Norman is a, talent, is a talented new musician and was a leading member of the famous Sam Pebbles Band. He was followed in 1990. 1998 by William Tommy. William, an insurance executive and broker, is also an, himself an accomplished musician. And I would say to Fisherman. He was followed by Steve Raffitt, a businessman and founding shareholder and director of the Nation newspaper. Steve was followed in 2000, the year that all the computers were supposed to start working, by broadcaster and media boss Vic Fernandes. Vic was followed by Algie Leacock, previously mentioned, um, son of Leo and an insurance executive. Algie was followed by Lionel Moore, who many of us refer to as Sir Humphrey. Lionel, an accountant, was a permanent secretary in government and became the permanent secretary to then Prime Minister Sandy Fruit. Those of you who have had the privilege to watch Yes Minister would know Sir Humphrey and therefore the naming of Lionel. Lionel was also a treasurer of the club for many years and a district treasurer at least three times and remains a um, resource to the district in managing our disaster account. Lionel was followed by Clyde Williams, yet another insurance executive and better known to us as CQ. CQ was followed by Roger Smith, co-owner of an autom auto automotive supply store a specialty in automotive paints. He's still a member, but we do not see him often. He was the president in 2004, uh, in the year when Hurricane Ivan devastated Grenada and was the lead in the coordinating the efforts here in Barbados. Um, Roger was followed, sorry, in 2005 by Tony Reese. Anthony Reese, who is still with us, an attorney at law and former senator. Tony was followed by Michael Brown, who had previously been a secretary and became president in 2006. Michael was an agricultural export promotion executive. He was followed by Jerry Ishmael in 2007. Jerry was co-owner of one of Barbados' primary event arranging companies. He was followed by Elvin Seeley in 2008. Elvin was head of British Airways, formerly BOAC, 
in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. And this is one of the points I digress on. Rotary being a wonderful organization of friends. Um, 1991, several of us traveled to Australia for the annual convention, 40,000 of us to be exact. When we were checking in the day to return, um, there were various countries. Um, I was summoned out of the line by a PA announcement in Melbourne Airport to report to the desk and was promptly upgraded to first class on my trip back home. Um, this, a smiling LBC, he turned up in that little office and obviously he was the person that did that. Ironically, he was traveling back via the US and he was not able to get an upgrade because his flight was full. So, so much for Rotarians helping one another. Um, but that's in the spirit that we operate in. Elvin was followed in 2009 by John McKenzie, another not active, but still a member. I believe I saw him on today. Welcome, John. Um, John was the finance executive. He was followed in 2010 by Erskine Thompson, then senior executive at the Barbados Industrial Development Corporation. In 2011, Brenda Pope, a management consultant, followed and became the first female president of our club. And that was also our 50th anniversary, an exciting and eventful year. Brenda was followed by Tony Williams in 2012. Tony was a banker and was followed by Ron Davis, another former banker and former treasurer of the club. Ron was followed by Alex McDonald, who at the time had a line that a communication company formerly cable and wireless. He was followed in 2015 by Jetta Robinson, Senior Superintendent of Police. Jetta was followed by Lisa Cummins, then head of the U UWI business arm, working between Barbados and Jamaica, and has recently been appointed as Senator and Minister of Government. In 2017, Paul Ashby followed Lisa. Paul is the CEO of a financial institution. And he was followed in 2018 by Sean Franklin, Evaluation Severe. Following Sean in 2019 was Peter Williams, who was the second managing director of Barbados Life and Power to be president. And he was followed by our current president, now 2021, Fiona Hines, herself an attorney at law and daughter of a former member, Patrick. Could not end without mentioning some names of extraordinary members who, though offered, were never um, president. Some are still with us and still could be president. But not in any particular order. Horace King, Alain Severe, St. Clair, Clary Clark, as we knew him, Chief Fire Officer. Roy Smith, still with us, Attorney at Law. Dr. John Mears, an educator. Sir Harcourt Lewis. Um, ex-government minister and senior government official, Paul Foster, a founding member and businessman, Maurice Foster, businessman, Randall Goddard, company director, David Potwalker, a company director, Ronald, Ronnie Carter, a banker, Brian Cole, an accountant still with us, Bertie Graham, later Sir Albert, pediatrician, Adrian Seeley, prior partner, Joe Johnson, airport executive, Billy Curtin, Coast Guard Commander, Ronald Ramsey, orthodontist, and John Miller, a banker. This is not necessarily an exhaustive list, but certainly ones that come um, to mind readily. So, President Fiona and members, I commend this to you as just a, a snippet of the, the uh, presidents from then to now. Um, there's only so much we can do in one meeting and uh, I hope that it's a little inspiration for us to do some more in a series that will cover other aspects. Thank you.